Hello friends, I am Swapna Shetty. In this video, we are going to understand the basic structure of collection framework and how to use list and set interfaces. So basically, when we come across collections, we need to know the limitations of arrays. Why should we know the limitations of arrays? Because when I say a collection, as the name itself indicates, collection is nothing but a group of elements. So a group of elements is nothing but an array which we already know in core Java. So when we already have arrays in core Java, why should we go for collections? So for that, there are few limitations of arrays we should know. So limitations of arrays are like first is it is fixed in size. Arrays are fixed in size. That is when we create an array, we need to know the size of an array in advance. And it can hold only homogeneous data elements. For example, if I create an integer array, I can store only integers in the array. I cannot store double or string values in an integer array. And moreover, method support is not available for an array. What is a method support? For example, if I want to remove an element from an array, I have to remove an element from an array and then adjust the size of an array accordingly. That is, move the index of the next element of the removed element to minus one. So these adjustments need to be done. For that, there is no method support for arrays and collections so collections are basically growable in nature we need not know the size in advance and it can hold both homogeneous and heterogeneous elements and moreover method support is available we have different methods like add insert remove all such methods are available in collections and it can be used to hold only objects when we when i say array array can store primitive data types uh, of course arrays are also hold are also used to store objects also but whereas collections it can store only objects when I store a primitive value inside a collection it internally gets converted into an object so what is basically a collection a collection is nothing but it's a group of individual objects which are represented as a single entity and collection framework is nothing but it's a set of classes and interfaces which can be used to represent a group of objects as a single entity. So this is the collection framework. First, it, first is the collection interface and under collection interface we have three sub interfaces called list, set and queue. And list is an interface under which we have got some classes called array list, linked list, vector. And under set, we have hash set, linked hash set, and sorted set is an interface. And under sorted set, we have tree set as a class. So green represents the interface and class, the other color represents the class. You can see the dotted lines means it implements. And if it's a solid line, it means it's an extends. It's a subclass, implementation class. And map, when you look at the collection framework structure like collection under collection we have list set and queue and moreover nowadays people are using only list and set and under collections which is not a sub interface of collection that is nothing but it's a map we also have a map interface which is not a sub interface of collection because map holds the objects in a key value pair whereas collection under collection we have list set which holds the objects as a single entity so that's the reason map is not a sub interface of a collection interface so under map we have got hash table class hash map and linked hash map classes and sorted map is a sub interface of map under which we have tree map as a class so let's see the differences we have list and set what are the basic differences between list and set so under list we have got array list linked list and vector classes and under set we have got hash set linked hash set and tree set so the underlying data structure for array list is growable array for linked list it is doubly linked list and for vector it is growable array and for hash set the underlying data structure is hash table that is it's it stores the objects in key value pairs and for linked hash set it follows both hash table and linked list also 
and for tree set it is balanced tree so when i say insertion order the way we give we insert elements to a list or set how they are actually stored is in array list the insertion order is preserved the way we insert the same way they are inserted into the array list similarly linked list and vector also but for set for hash set the insertion order is not preserved for linked hash set it is preserved because it is following linked list underlying data structure is linked list where insertion order will be preserved and for tree set the insertion order is not preserved and duplicate objects are allowed for list implemented classes but are not allowed for set implemented classes similarly heterogeneous objects are allowed for list and hash set and linked hash set also but it is not allowed for tree set so when i say tree set whenever we enter elements we insert elements into a tree set they are always inserted based on sorting that is either as in its ascending order on it or in descending order they are always inserted in some order so when i try to insert heterogeneous object for example first if i entered string and then an integer both are of different data types and which cannot be compared so that's the reason heterogeneous objects are not allowed for a tree set and null insertion is possible for list implemented classes whereas it is also possible for set implemented classes but for tree set it is possible only once that too as the first element that is we can insert null into tree set only as the first element because if i entered a string as the first element and then if i enter null string and null cannot be compared so they cannot be sorted so that is the reason tree set allows only one null that to as the first element and there are few important methods in collection interface like size is empty contains two array so size gives the number of elements in the collection and is empty which returns a boolean value and it if it returns true if the collection has no elements and contains also returns a boolean value it returns true if the collection object has got that specified element and two array it will return an array which will contain all the elements in the collection and there are also few methods in array list like add add index element and so on so add will append the element at the end of the list and add index will insert the element at the specified position in the list that this with the index and clear will remove all the elements from the list and add all here it appends all of the elements in the specified collection to the end of the list and contains it ret returns a boolean value that is it returns true if the list contains the specified element that is o similarly we have few methods in hash set like add clear contains is empty and iterator is one of the method which returns an iterator basically we use iterator for traversing through a collection object and remove is a method which removes a specified element from the set and size will return the number of elements in the set so let's see one example of array list so for that i would create a new java project saying collection samples and under this i would create a class called array list demo within a package com.educators and with a main method so first i will insert elements into array list that is array list object name is al equals to new array list so we need to import the package so all the collection 
classes or interfaces are located in a package called util. So we need to import java.util package. So we have created an array list object. Then I can simply say al dot add method. That's the reason I say collections have method support. You can see all the methods here. Add, add all, clear, contains, equals, is empty, and so on. So remove all such methods are available to the collection interfaces or classes. So I will simply add some values here. Like for example, I add an integer first and I would add a string called Ramu and then I would add some float value or double value. And if I want to see what are the elements presented in array list, I would simply say system.out.println al. So let's execute this run as Java application. You can see the elements got inserted. That is 10, Ramu, and 12.5. So this is the reason I say that array list can hold heterogeneous elements. It can store integers, string, and also double values. So let's see if it can hold the duplicates. For example, if I try to add 10 again, so let's see if it allows duplicate values or not. So you can see here, it is allowing duplicates. To 10 is inserted again. So list, array list allows duplicates. Let's see if null insertion is possible. Al dot add of null. Run as Java application. You can see null also got inserted. So array list is an object, is a class basically, which is an implementation class of list interface, which allows heterogeneous elements, which allows duplicates, and which also allows null values. So this is what we have just seen now. That's all with the session. Thank you.